Toaster, toaster, toaster. You foolishly went and touched my mans. Now I'm gonna have to touch you. Pause. Trip sauce. Hey yo. <laughs> Hello everyone. It's your boy Drip Sauce. Today we're gonna be debunking the toaster himself. So without wasting much of your time, let's get started with the video. Zeno Goku, although he has experienced pretty much every piece of Dragon Ball, like, ever, except for the super anime, which includes all 13 of the Dragon Ball Z movies, as well as GT, the movies are mainly important due to the fact that in Return of the Cooler, he showed being able to fight Cooler inside of instant transmission. Now, I am very fucking lazy, so I'm just gonna use a clip from one of my videos to explain just how impressive that feat is. Also, moving inside of instant transmission isn't really a feat. That's how instant transmission works. It's not an ordinary teleportation technique. In fact, let me just let myself explain. The thing about instant transmission is that it's not just a regular teleportation technique where your atoms disappear from one place and appear in another, it actually takes you to a different realm that is stated to transcend time and is located between time and space, which is in context of the fact that it encompasses place at the Sugoroku space and the hyperbolic time chamber and is stated in the Chosenshu guidebook to have no concept of time and space within it. In Dragon Ball GT, when Kabito Kai and Goku are teleporting, Baby's attack actually reaches inside of the instant transmission zone and warps Goku into a different dimension of space, referring to the Sugoroku space. If this realm is stated to have no concept of time and space, while also being stated to transcend time and space, being located between it in context of the fact that it encompasses some dimensions of the living world, it would easily qualify this instant transmission realm as outerversal bare minimum, which means it allows you to move at something called irrelevant speed, which is movement beyond the concepts of distance and time, essentially making you faster than speed itself. Pretty straightforward instant transmission realm, you know, outerversal, irrelevant speed. However, I do not think that inherently scales your speed simply because that's not how instant transmission works. Simply because you move inside of it does not mean that you scale to it, right? Instant transmission is not really your average teleportation technique like I explained. In most cases, it's called instantaneous movement, right? So basically, in every iteration of Dragon Ball, whenever Goku is using instant transmission, he's actually inside of this realm, which makes him significantly faster than everyone else in the main, like in the timeline, right? And the problem is, is that there's already people with irrelevant speed. Anyone who scales the Battle of Gods Goku or above is automatically irrelevant speed. So actually, instant transmission, it being still relevant to Goku, would be a much higher level of irrelevant speed, which is actually crazy. Flying past universal sized bodies, which are infinite using Toei anime filler, and flying from the other world to the pits of hell, which are both infinite. In Xenoverse 1, we see some time breaker amp characters like Frieza, Cell, and Boo destroy entire timeline crystals, which are entire timelines. Yeah, thanks for pointing this out. So, since we already established that each of the timelines or stories within this context contains its own instant transmission realm, this would just blatantly be an outerversal feat, bare minimum, because you can actually get it multiple layers into outer, but I'm too lazy for that. So, basically, like, Thanks for pointing this out, by the way, but those characters were, like, amped, right? So, guys, don't use Majin Buu as Outerversal or whatever. Like, nah. He was amped by the, like, Time Breaker and whatever the fuck. A very interesting thing is that due to how many times the concept of space and time is mentioned within Dragon Ball, it is very likely that Toki Toki actually embodies the concept of these dimensions rather than just a um, normal, regular dimension dimensions themselves, if you understand what I'm trying to say. There's also things like infinite dimensional super spaces, which I'm too lazy to explain right now, so I'll just let myself from a previous video do the explaining. Garlic Jr. creates a super space with his key, which some translations say in hyperspace, however the kanji used is actually Chokukan, which means super space, in contrast to Akukan, which means hyperspace. With super space either being something fifth dimensional or something infinite dimensional. However, in order to say super space is infinite dimensional rather than just higher dimensional, you would need context. For example, super spaces that are in context to bosonic string theory are inherently infinite dimensional as they involve supersymmetry which entails an infinite amount of dimensional axes and coordinates. With quantum mechanics and wave functions being shown to exist in Dragon Ball, stated on the official Dragon Ball website, as you can see, pretty straightforward high hyper. It's really very easy to get Dragon Ball characters from high hyper to low outer even with without using the afterlife meta, which obviously is contentious in the community. Was capable of completely obliterating the time 
Quest, which holds the entire infinite history. History within the Dragon Ball multiverse is consistently shown to be infinite via many statements from several Toki Toki and Kanton City residents. With that being stated that history isn't linear, and it certainly isn't finite, and we even have Chronoa further backing these statements up, supporting the notion that history is infinite, even promotional guides verbatim call it the infinite history, with history in this context referring to the timelines of each conceivable possibility. In Dragon Ball Heroes, we literally see Demigro as capable of wiping out the entirety of the aforementioned multiverse. As he stated, all the creation, everything in the world, will become nothing as it once was. The main point being that Toki Toki and Demigra is fully capable of performing these feats in whole and being able to wipe out these infinite sets of timelines and potentially one attack. Imagine if Goku and Beerus clashing fists at the start of Super didn't only threaten Universe 7, but just blew up the entire timeline and conceivably infinite amounts of them. That's how stupid this feat is. And of course, Goku in Xenoverse 1 was capable of holding and nullifying the same energy ball that was going to blow up the infinite history. We even have him, as well as the CAC, defeating Demigra in his second Toki Toki amp form without even utilizing Super Saiyan God or Blue. This is literally a base Goku enduring the power to obliterate the multiverse and a Super Saiyan 3 Goku defeating Demigra. You see, what many people don't understand or aren't aware of is this secret that that Goku is actually the main continuity Dragon Ball Z slash Super Goku who performs that feat. And if you want to know why, the secret exists inside this video. So go watch it right away. There I explain what canon means in Dragon Ball and what is canon to Dragon Ball Super and Z, whatever the fuck. Meaning that at a baseline, this Goku should immediately scale to a timeline, which are baseline 4D. Um, that's wrong. Each timeline would at least contain those super spaces, which as I explained, are high hyperstructures. Even so, timelines are not necessarily 4D. The macrocosms, even if you remove the afterlife from the equation, right, the universes have their own space-time, and their space-time does not affect the neutral zone, neither does it affect Zeno's palace, completely different, and they're embedded within the neutral zone, right? So if they have their own space-time, then they're infinite, but yet they're embedded into something that contains all of them. It means that is a higher level of infinity still contained within the timeline. So you're just being disingenuous. You seem not to understand that you can have a hyper time Timeline that contains infinities that are beyond the fourth dimension. A timeline doesn't necessarily have to just be fourth dimensional, bro. Able to make fodder of a second form demigra who scales above the aforementioned demigra that could annihilate history. The same demigra that transcends both time and space as a whole, although it's not the concepts. Okay, that's wrong. To transcend time and space in Dragon Ball to the point where you reach Beats World is to go beyond the concepts of time and space. Like I already established, the instant transmission zone would be outer versal. So if you're going beyond that, you're actually transcending the concept of time and space multiple times over making you layers into outer and this is without using the afterlife meta which i know is contentious and i don't want to make this video too long so i'm not going to go into the explanation that's going to come in my next order of videos where i scale dragon ball super i think the demigra pretty blatantly is fifth to sixth dimensional via the scaling or low complex multiversal which is already beyond our canon goku from super um i'm not sure you know this but like canon goku from super is actually stronger than zeno goku like, I explained this a little bit in my canonicity video, but I guess I gotta have to make a new video explaining it in details because I got a lot more scans. Also, you scaled Demigram multiple layers into outer, not fifth to sixth dimensional. Correct yourself, bruh. I know a lot of people are going to try to hop on and say base Super Goku is like outer, but the arguments for getting canon Goku to those levels of power are kind of ridiculous, and it could genuinely be a debunk video of its own. I literally double me dare you to watch the latest video I made, Debunking Surfbone. And after watching that, try your best to make an out of Versal Goku debunk, end quote. Go ahead and try. I dare you to make the video, bro. Like, watch how badly you get embarrassed, bro. The only real way I could see Zenogoku getting to out of Versal would be via the Toki Toki scan and taking the all dimension statement at face value and saying that it's in reference to literally all dimensions, which in itself would be outer. If you've been watching this video from the beginning, I think you already know why that scan actually scales Toki Toki anywhere from high hyper to outer, bare minimum. Though it's very, very ambiguous, and it should just be taken as a highball interpretation. The second scan I want to cover very briefly is the Universal Tree Scan. And this is actually a scan that I fell victim to in my earlier videos, which are pretty ass, I can't lie. Maybe I'll remake those videos at some point, but the main thing the scan had to offer was that it was an infinite dimensional tree or consisting of infinite dimensional space and transcends the concept of space itself. Now, not only was he scanned fake, as I mentioned prior, but it's not even consistent as let's consider the magnitude of the tree. The universe tree is consistently described as being as big as a galaxy. Its roots stretch across rifts in space time to connect with the 12 different universes. And this scan is also nowhere to be found on the original and official Dragon Ball website, where it was also claimed to be only visible in Japan, where it's even nowhere to be found there either. So I thought it'd be pretty important to actually go over that scan since a lot of my earlier subscribers are probably curious about it. Um, guys, I'm gonna have to agree with Toaster on this one. I also fell victim to the Universal Tree Scan. We tried really hard to, like, get people to stop using it, try to establish that it's fake, because we don't know who, like, created it, but, like, we literally, like, literally earlier this year, like, we found out it was fake. We started telling everyone, don't use the Universal Tree Scan, it's fake, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, it's fake. Toaster is right. It's fake. But there is still a way you can get the Universal Tree layers into outer. 
let me explain. The crack of time is verbatim stated to be separated from time itself, and it contains all those worlds and histories, which you can scale anywhere from high hyperversal to outer versal, like I already established. And the thing is that the universe tree actually exists inside of the crack of time, which transcends at least outer versal constructs, right? So this would make the crack of time a one layer to two layer into outer versal construct, which would make the universe tree an outer versal tree by definition. So it's not far-fetched from the fake scan. The only argument I could see against this is that people saying that, oh, it was stated to be as big as a galaxy. However, the size of the universe tree is quite literally inconsistent, as we see in the anime, where quite literally Xeno Goku and Capsule Corp Goku are comparable somewhat to the size of the universe tree and are not that much smaller than it. Also, we know that it could just be galaxy size in an outer versal realm. For example, if you have a higher plane of existence than another realm, right? You can have a table in a higher plane of existence being infinitely larger than a table in a lower plane of existence, right? So it's basically the same analogy. Oh yeah, and here's more evidence that the universe tree is located inside of the crack of time in case you weren't convinced by my scan. And then you have the white page or the white realm where the manga is drawn upon. We see this as Orale is able to go outside of the verse and enter into this white realm slash place and is able to manipulate certain aspects of the verse. So we can just assert it's a higher plane of existence beyond the verse since it is the place where the verse is like created upon, right? The verse is viewed as a lower infinity within this white void. All right, so we got the instant transmission realm, outer versal. Crack of Time contains these histories, two layers into Outer Versal. The White Blank Page, where the manga is drawn upon, three layers into Outer Versal. Beats World, four layers into Outer Versal. Then we have the Charismas, who view the Dark Demon Realm arc, which contains, like, which entails Beats World, because Beats World was a part of the Dark Demon Realm arc. It views that as fiction, making that five layers into Outer Versal. Then you have what I think is the fictional Japan, which views even the charismas as fiction, making this six layers into Outer Versal in total. This is actually the realm of the editors where this character has to self-insert himself as an avatar into the charisma world for a contract. He's not from the charisma world, right? He's from a higher plane of existence, as explained below. And the thing is that Fu, a far weaker base version of Fu from the beginning of Dragon Ball Heroes, is able to enter this realm, right? Is able to transcend into this realm that views all of Dragon Ball Heroes as fiction. And as we know, this version of Fu is absolute fodder to the later version of Fu who absorbed Dogi Dogi, who had the two demon wings and whatever. So, yeah, Dragon Ball Heroes is a beast bruh so in total we got six layers into outer versal for xeno goku pretty solid you can argue higher things however i tend to digress and my mentor doesn't really agree with them although we don't really need more than this to slam fate reaching the ultimate barrier of the moonstone which happens to reside in the eighth dimension okay okay 8d cool but not enough on bb is ultimately defeated by servants in fate including the likes of saber and Gilgamesh. I don't necessarily disagree, but at least try to show the scans next time, please. It has the capabilities of completely slicing through the 8th dimensions with it wielding an 8th dimensional barrier, and its core being said to be an even higher dimension than this, meaning that we can immediately assume 9th dimensional for the moon cell core. Gil I don't really have a problem with 9D, however, that argument was just terrible. You can't assume that it's a higher dimension than the moon cell just because it says it has a higher dimensional existence. That literally lacks context, bro. Imagine is also shown casually slapping around Altera in Fae Xtella, who is said to have the power to destroy the entire moon cell without the use of Regalia. Again. Again, I don't disagree, but please show the scans, bro. The moon cell, as we went over, can cut through eight dimensions as an eight dimensional shield with a higher dimensional core, or 9D, since it's said to be higher than eight. In Gilgamesh's side story in Fate Xtella, we see him defeat Altoria, who could defeat Altera, and was shown overpowering the likes of Tomamo, who was amped by the Regalia. The Regalia is said to have the power of the entire moon cell, and the powers of the moon cell is enough to make it seem like it's holding the entire thing. Okay, so with those scans, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Shiki's scaling mainly revolves around her being the root and the root being Shiki. Firstly, I want proof that that scan is valid, because this is a common thing with SCP fans, Rimuru fans, a lot of these novel fans where they just get random weird looking scans, and when I ask them for evidence that the scan is canon or valid, or for a link for me to go see the scan for myself in the official material, it can't be provided. So please send like a source to that scan or proof it's valid whatsoever. Secondly, contextually what it's talking about is that Shigi is a path 
to the root, not that she is the root herself. It never says that. You're strawmanning the scan. The root represents a metaphysical power that goes beyond any ideas or tangible forms of being. It Again, prove the scan is valid. Again, your scan doesn't say that. It exists beyond the confines of time. Where does it say that? Where, bro? It serves as the birthplace and final destination for all souls, including those of the hero experience, recorded on the throes of heroes. What you're saying is not matching what's in the scan, bro. The only relevant things I tend to see there is, like, it's saying she's the embodiment of Ryogi, which, please elaborate on what Ryogi is. And it's saying she's the symbol of yin and yang given form, like, bro, okay? That scale is absolutely nowhere. No one fucking cares about yin and yang. It would also surpass the duality of yin and yang, which is fodder without context. And extends beyond any form of binary existence, as it would go beyond the notion of being positioned between a binary system. Neither you nor the scan you sent proves anything you just said here, bro. You're just saying things with no evidence, like, bro, what the fuck? Or having any value within that system, completely transcending the constraints of binary existence as a whole. It surpasses the fundamental idea of Taiji, which encapsulates both transduality and non-duality. The true nature of the root cannot be adequately expressed in words, and any effort to describe it would only diminish its inherent power. In the second scan he sent at the bottom part of the scan quite literally says two years passes in this realm so it is quite literally bounded by time this aligns with the philosophical principle known as apophatic theology this concept eludicates the constraints of conventional infinity it views actual infinity as a comprehensive collection and this notion is further examined through the analogy of non-euclidean space which is infinite but possesses limitations a non-euclidean space can literally still be spatial and temporal it can literally still be a dimensional construct in the previous scan you sent it proves that it has time as two years is able to pass there in this scan you sent it proves that it has space as it quite literally calls it a space even referencing you non-euclidean geometry literally proves that it has a space because just because it doesn't follow Euclidean geometry doesn't mean it can't be a dimensional construct. So no, this doesn't prove anything. In each dimension, the boundary emerges from the subsequent dimension, which represents a higher level of infinity. For instance, in two dimensions, the boundary of infinity is infinity raised to the power of infinity. In hyperbolic geometry, this principle applies to all dimensions up to 1a. This principle applies to all dimensions up to 1a+. plus. No, you need to do your research, buddy. Hyperbolic geometry just studies the properties of curved spaces. It is still under dimensionality by definition. Mathematical operations applicable to such infinities cannot be extended to the root, which fundamentally surpasses them in magnitude. Shiki, who maintains a connection to the root, can perceive the conclusion of these infinities, perceiving them as mere small rooms. Shiki, using the scale, would at the very least be out of reversal. Well, congrats. You never got her past 8D, bro. Stop the cap. As for speed, these servants have the ability to traverse within Solomon's temple, a location that exists outside the realm of space and time. This needs further context because simply being beyond a certain realm or being beyond time and space doesn't necessarily mean you transcend it. This could just simply be in context to a separate or distant realm. So when they say beyond time and space, it's in context to the fact that it's beyond the realm that they are currently in, right? So it's just a separate realm. That idea can still work. It doesn't have to go to the extreme of saying it transcends it unless you have context to prove that. Servants possess a unique quality of being detached from the Okay, so this is in no way, shape, or form referring to the abstract concept of time, but actually the subjective notion of time, right? How we know this is because they say that Saber isn't dead, right? She isn't like the heroic spirit, so she isn't removed from the concept of time. This could quite literally be in reference to the fact that since they are spirits, or dead, or ghosts, the concept of time doesn't really mean anything to them. There's quite literally no reason to assume that this is referring to the abstract concept of time because there's no evidence for that Straits of time they have the ability to exist in Claudia, a realm that exists outside the time axis and lacks any notion of time even solomon reon for his ability to perceive all potential futures is unable to grasp this concept simply being isolated from a temporal axis does not imply that you lack a temporal axis and if you're gonna try to use a second scan to support that argument i suggest you reread it because it quite literally says this place doesn't really have a concept of time bro it's quite literally referring to a subjective concept of time not the true abstract concept of time also the bottom scan doesn't say that he can't grasp the concept or whatever the fuck you said it says that he has trouble perceiving it just because i have trouble doing something does it imply that i'm completely incapable of doing said thing the situation can be likened to the counters of achilles and chiron who engaged in battle within a realm where time stood still such as the far side of the moon cell where concepts like distance and time hold no meaning as they don't exist okay so if you're likening or equating that realm where time stood still to the far side of the moon cell where quote unquote the concept of distance and time don't exist then it quite literally proves that it's referring to a subjective concept seen as firstly it says time stood still implying it still exists it was just paused right so if it has time right so 
it would basically just be extrapolating on the fact that it's a subjective concept of distance in space and time and not an objective abstract concept. It doesn't even make sense for this to be referring to a true objective and abstract concept <laughs> as it says the far side of the moon has no concept of distance and time like bro what the fuck is that bro this being we call in the power scaling community immeasurable to potentially irrelevant speed depending on the theory system and if i give you the benefit of the doubt for everything you said as regards to speed it would just be infinite to immeasurable speed which is a huge benefit of the doubt it's not even it's not even accurate at all so I'm just gonna call cap on this one. Zeno Goku slams even at a low ball. The entire video was just full at horrible, desperate attempts to downplay Dragon Ball and wank fate. Zeno Goku slams. End of story.